as only he can. Uh, he made a deep run yesterday, lost playing for top eight, making another deep run today at six and one. Um, eight creatures, four Goblin Guide, four Grimlock Mancer, the rest burn spells targeting your face, along with 21 lands. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Only difference here from his typical take on burn is that it is three Sulfuric Vortex. Worth noting is that Patrick does not play Vexing Devil, which a lot of burn players have uh, started playing recently, including Austin Yost, I know. But uh, Patrick, that's not his jam. No. That's not how he gets down. Derek shoots on the left. We had featured him earlier today. He uh, he lost in his only feature match this weekend against Joe Lissette. Uh, Joe was playing Blue White Miracles. Derek was playing Red Delver, of course. Derek here again, uh, winning since that loss. So this is essentially a match playing for top eight. There's you know of course if something could not break their way, they would have to yep. play the following round, but. With this tournament attendance being uh, not so far over the mark, uh, it's very likely that it will be mostly all of the X1s drawing into top eight and potentially uh, even one a, an unintentional draw playing for it will get in, uh, maybe one X2, but anything. It's crazy out there. It is crazy. As we see, a suspended Rift Bolt, the first of many burn spells by Patrick. Checking for Hopefully. Delver. <laughs> Delver is going to flip Force of Will. And we see a Force of Will for Derek. Uh, Derek actually already had a Force of Will in his hand, so that was not an ideal flip for him. Uh, Patrick now knows for a fact <laughs> yeah. he might get Force of Will. So in for three with the Delver, and this is just your good old-fashioned race here. Derek does have ways to interact via Ponder, Force of Will, um, Spell Pierce, what have you. He also has four Stifles in his deck list, um, so a Stifle actually will counter a Rift Bolt here if he has one. Um, but this is oh. just your good old-fashioned race, as we do see a Stifle. Ponder I can stifler. predict the future. Jeez, you're scary. Not just Patrick. Uh, I can too. Notable is that one of the best weapons against Rugged Over for a burn player is Price of Progress. Uh, their mana base requires them to pull out a lot of non-basics, and it gets tricky to keep Wasteland open to protect yourself. That protection involving usually destroying two of your own lands. Correct. So it's hardly even ideal when it works. But whatever it takes not to get killed, as we are going to see the Rift Bolt here, and it is likely to meet a Stifle. Yep. Trying to kill the Delver, and he says, no, sir. Yeah, Patrick has to kill the Delver because it's a lightning bolt that attacks every turn, and all of his, they only attack once. We're clarifying that we haven't drawn a card yet because that's how Rift Bolt works, yep. and that it remains exiled because also that's how Rift Bolt works. Indeed. Very, very confusing card, isn't it? We'll see what Patrick can set up here. He does have four Price of Progress, as you mentioned, in his deck list. So he's going to have to find a way to fight through these Force of Wills and everything else that Derek has going on, all the permission that he has, so he can continue beating down with the Insectile Aberration. Solving the puzzle, as it were. Derek's hand appears to be pretty strong. He's got two Force of Wills, a Delver of Secrets, and a Nimble Mongoose alongside a Fetchland. Uh, with that kind of a grip, you can hit Threshold in short order, turn this clock into a real speedy one. Patrick's doing a little counting, figuring out what happens every time a Delver of Secrets attacks him. Yep. He's uh, good at counting in threes. So. Yeah, he's, he's learned. <laughs> it's, it's a skill that he's learned. As he is moving and grooving here, trying to figure out exactly what he's going to want to do, we're going to see a Flame Rift here from Patrick. Deals four damage to each player, for those of you guys who are not familiar, at so Sorcery Speed, a common from Nemesis, not often seen. That's going to knock each player down for life. We'll see a Delver come across here. Two hits from a Delver. As you see a Nimble Mongoose post combat. And that's it. Patrick's not above conceding. He knows the Force of Will's there. Uh, and you know, Burn, it can take a while to win games, so you really want to make sure you conserve the yeah. clock. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, Patrick had a good enough clock. His hand probably can contain some number of rift bolts, as, or excuse me, flame rifts as well, or fire blast, <laughs> or something to the effect of, yeah, I'm not going to be, be able to beat this race. I can't help but laugh because I, I'm watching the spotting judge. He uh, wasn't sure who won the game, and he laughed, and Pat, Patrick couldn't help but chuckle yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah. point across the table. Not me. Not, it goes to Derek. Uh, Patrick is going to be on the play for this next game. Looking at his sideboard here. Searing Blaze, definitely going to do some nice work here. Be able to take care of Delver Secrets, potentially a Tarmor Wife as well. Also, you're going to find four Vexing Shushers. Not sure if those are going to come in or not, but he primarily has those for the, for the counterbalance matchup, but Rug does have some counter, 
counter magic, and Vexing Special will be able to dodge that. I think and I attack like for fine. two. Yeah, like it attacks for two, and uh, yeah, I, I think I'm actually uh, into these Vexing Shushers. I'm not entirely sure that Sulfuric Vortex or Flame Rift are where you want to be in this matchup. Yeah, so. that's that's very fair. Flame Rift is an incredibly dangerous card in this matchup. Absolutely. What do you think about Ensnaring Bridge? Um, I don't. If he can get it, I mean, of course, he has to get his hand empty enough for it to be yeah. for it to be something. To, to, to have an effect on the game. I just don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Also, three mana in his 21 land deck and, and 12 of the lands in his deck are fetch lands. It might be a little bit difficult to yeah. get to. Getting it through a spell pierce is probably impossible, and getting it even through a daze is going to be tough. So I, I don't think we'll see that card, but it is in the deck. Uh, over on Derek's side of the board, he's got a pair of fork bolts. I imagine he'll uh, probably bring in those just because they're pretty good. Spell pierce... Uh, also quite strong. He doesn't really seem to have much else, though. You can, you can. I've seen it. I'm not advocating it to anyone listening. To this be clear, be surgical extraction. Not advocating it, but yes, yeah. I have seen rug players bring in surgical extraction in this matchup. I think that that is mostly atrocious. Uh, but you know, pe people do some crazy things up there. They do. They do do some crazy stuff. You get, you get on camera. The lights are in your eyes. You know, it's ah, can't it's hard, see. It's hard to figure out what to do. Uh, so yeah, I think he'll bring in probably the Fork Bolts and uh, the Spell Pierce, and that's basically it. I think Fork Bolt is just better than Fire and Ice in this matchup. Yep, very um, likely true. Stifle actually, oddly enough, like is pretty good against Patrick. Again, he does have 12 Fetch Lands. He does have Rift Bolt as well. It can Stifle Grim Lava Mancer activation. There are actually some things that Stifle can do here. Yeah, I like Stifle just fine. I think one of the awkward things about the matchup is that a lot of Rugs cards play differently, but they don't play badly. Uh, Stifle and Spell Pierce being the two big ones. Uh, this is a matchup where also I very rarely, if I'm the rug player, side out dazes, even if I'm on the draw, because it's just kind of difficult for the burn deck to assemble the perfect storm against you. <laughs> but I know, you know, Patrick likely knew coming into this tournament he was going to play against rug at, at least one time, probably two. Um, so I'm sure that he has built his deck in such a way that he's not really scared to be up against this matchup. I don't know if he's played against it today, but. I know that coming into, coming into any Legacy tournament at this point, where the format is, you know you're going to have to beat at least one Rug Delver deck, if not two, on your way to a good tournament. So we'll see exactly what he can do here, because game one was a very one-sided affair. So each player is shuffling the other stack. We're going to see Patrick on the play this game with his jolly nature and his uh, burn spells. All right, hand uh, through the hand through the hair, a classic oh. move. It's a, it's a tough hand to evaluate, you know. We need a mountain. I think we might be past that stage. <laughs> the stage where we have a mountain. The question is, do we have too many mountains? Do we have too many mountains? That's an important stage as well. Patrick's going to keep. Derek's going to quickly mulligan. He was just poised, ready, and waiting for Patrick to uh, make his decision first. Didn't want to give away any information. Yeah, get this hand out of here. <laughs> Cedric and I have a, a mutual horse in an uh, online PTQ right now, actually. John Kubler, better known online as Gosu. Is, uh, I believe in the finals, or potentially uh, has competed the finals. He winner! won! Winner! Winner! He won! John Kubelier, congratulations. You have qualified for yet another Pro Tour through Magic Online. Correct. Winning the lottery four or five times at this point. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys follow my articles at all, when I was back playing Wolf Run Ramp uh, and got fourth place in an online PTQ, almost winning the lottery, but not quite, um, John was the designer behind that deck. Um, he's the designer behind a lot of decks that people just aren't aware of because he doesn't, no. he, he's very good at losing in the finals of PTQs. He is. Is what he's good at. He appears to have unlearned that skill, however. I know in Florida at one point he had uh, about 30 PTQ top eights and only one win. Yes. Which is an incredible number. Um, so congratulations yeah. to John on qualifying for another pro tour he okay. qualified for. Is it? Seattle online, he's qualified for Montreal online, which is the one he just queued for. Yep. And I think the one prior to that in Barcelona. So yes. mega props to a man who has built me a deck or two and I can thank for some of some of my success, excuse me. Is it weird that I'm kind of like a little bummed that he won? He's my teammate in San Jose, so I think the fire might be... You know, yeah, little, if you're bummed, you're not dead. a good friend. 
pretty easy. So we see just a mountain here from Patrick. Saying go, no Goblin Guide or Grim Lava Mancer yet for him. Oh, we had a volcanic island turn around there. Oh, we have a truck pull too. But we're gonna leave them. Uh, all right. Not everyone's a stickler like you. It doesn't bother some it, people. Oh, it bothers the crap out of me. Uh, I think it's safe to say, however, that that's likely a result of his game one cards. So it's possible more cards from game one could be turned around, which would be a dangerous penalty to accrue, as that's an easy mark of cards with a pattern. As we see a Delver of Secrets attempted a lightning bolt, are we gonna see a daze here? We are gonna see a daze yep. here. Okay. That indicates Patrick probably uh, either has a lot of spells or doesn't have a lot of lands. <laughs> So we see Patrick has just drawn a Searing Blaze. Does yep. this mean he doesn't look like he has many lands then? Yeah, he doesn't have lands. That's why he Lightning Bolted on the instep, because untapping to play around days wasn't really very relevant. Yep. Uh, Patrick, I believe, noticed the card, actually. Or, what are we doing? I have actually no idea what's happening right now. This one's now. new to me. I haven't seen this before. Hey, you, shuffle. <laughs> yeah. What kind of power does he have over the players here? <laughs> Okay, Derek saw an extra card while he was drawing. Okay. Ah. As we see Brainstorm flipping over the Insectile, the, the Delver Secrets into an Insectile Library. Two blind flips for Derek. Uh, he's winning those coin flips. Yeah, magic's easy. Magic is uh, not easy, he said. Oh. It's incredibly difficult. That's true. Incredibly difficult. That's true. Except for John Kubler. <laughs> yes, well, making it look easy at least. <laughs> All right, Rift Bolt coming off. How about this? No. Spell Pierce says no. Patrick looking for a second land for the Searing Blaze in his hand desperately. That's he has one. found one. In ding, 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 ding. This is going to move Patrick down to 16. see a Searing Blaze right now. Kapow! Yep. No Force of Will, no problems. Yep. Now we do know that Derek's hand is, we see a Fire and Ice in the front. He just did draw a Wasteland as well, which is completely dead against Patrick's deck. It does tap for mana, of course. Yep. And we will see a Brainstorm here. One, two, two. I saw a Three. Nimble Mongoose, a Green Sun Zenith, and a Ponder in that Brainstorm. What I don't That's see. That's pretty good, but he has no green. Yes, what I don't see is a Fetch Land or any way to cast those green spells in his hand. Yep. He's gonna probably... I imagine he'll throw back Fire Ice and the Green Sun Zenith, probably? Planning to saying. draw the uh, Fire Ice? Mm -hmm. All right. Both green cards are gonna no, go away. Both green cards are gonna go away, okay. You see a Wasteland, he's gonna pass it back. That's interesting. I'm not sure why he's holding the Fire Ice. I think he knows at this point Patrick does not have a Goblin Guide. Uh, so, it's only really if he draws one, and we have a bunch of burn spells in our hand still. We're gonna see wooded foothills from Patrick, knocking him down, knocking himself down to 15. Searching out another one of his beta mountains. Uh, those are Arabian Nights, aren't they? Those are not beta. Those are not. Uh, you're probably right. I think they're Arabian Nights. I think Patrick's a classy guy. He. Uh, so you're saying I'm classless? Knights. No, I'm saying beta's classless. I don't know about you. Oh, okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. We're gonna see a vexing shusher here from Patrick. Cannot uh, be countered and. For those of you who have not seen Vexing Shusher for a little while, we're going to bring it up on the screen for you guys. It is very anti-counter magic, to say the least. And it has one of my favorite creature types. I love myself a goblin. Of course, who doesn't? Goblin see, Shaman. As you see, <laughs> yeah, it might as well be a shaman. As you see, it can't be countered, and it can make his spells uncounterable. So those spell pierces, those dazes, those force of wills that are a problem, as we see a Scalding Tarn for Patrick won't be one for much longer. It's interesting that uh, Derek went ahead and let Patrick untap because that would give him, gave him the ability to actually start casting some spells that he could make uncounterable. That kind of gives Patrick potentially the read that Derek doesn't have any counter spells because otherwise he would have definitely just killed this guy on the spot. Well, as we do see the fire half of Fire and Ice targeting the Vetching Shusher, Patrick is going to take the opportunity likely to force some damage through here via burn spells. Yeah. Because we do have confirmation that I am a moron, and they are Arabian <laughs> Nights Mountains. Moron's harsh. Not beta. Harsh. You're just a little dum-dum. I am who I am. <laughs> I am who I am. Are we going to the Vortex? Oh, okay. We do see Ensnaring Bridge. Ensnaring Bridge, indeed. 
something that you felt would happen, it's gotten through the counter magic. Interestingly, I think I like the ensnaring bridge uh, for one game, but once your opponent sees it, I kind of like bringing it out, uh, hoping he'll bring in like his ancient grudges or crows and grips or whatever. Give him some dead draws. Yeah, I think that's pretty reasonable. We see a ponder here. Patrick thinking for a moment if he wants to sacrifice that scalding tarn. Of course, the reason being a stifle. With Derek only having one blue mana available to him right now, might as well get that through if, if he can. As we see a wasteland, wasteland lightning bolt, tropical, tropical island. island mana from heaven. <laughs> now this would this. This is, you know, a pretty big deal because he can cast his green cards. But again, those green cards don't do very much no, right now because no. they can't really attack as soon as Patrick empties out his hand. I think we're gonna play the Chop Island here and Green Sun Zenith to shuffle away the bad cards, or are we just gonna play the Nimble? He's gonna okay. play a Nimble, and I think the reason he's holding that Green Sun Zenith is because he has a scavenging scavenging ooze that he can search for, sure, to gain himself some life. That's a pretty valuable creature to have. So we see a Price of Progress in Ooh, Patrick's hand and a Flame Rift. He kept those in. He's a wiser man than we, I guess. Well, he's very good at his craft, as we see Price of Progress through Counter Magic. He's gonna go ahead and make Derek decide, do I take, does he want to take six damage, four damage, yeah. or two damage? Waste, uh, or do I want to waste myself? You can Wasteland targeting Wasteland, for those back at home. Uh, it will be countered, obviously, but the Wasteland will be in the graveyard, and that means you only take four damage. So Derek can modulate this pretty much however he wants, as long as he knows that particular interaction. And it's interesting, I think, you know, Patrick is looking at, you know, he, he's showing a face of basically like, you know, not entirely happy with that. Whoa! We wastelanded our tropical island? Well, most of his cards in his hand are red. That's fair, but he doesn't really need them right now. We see a Grim Lava Mancer coming into play. And he draws another, another lightning, lightning bolt. bolt. That's a, it's a trio. I assume our Nimble Mongoose can't attack right now. I'm not sure about that. Well, actually, I guess... Either it can't attack, or it will trade with a Grim Lava Mancer, so yeah. that would be bad. Okay, we have a confirmation on Threshold. I think that puts the Nimble Mongoose at bay, as Patrick's hand is one card, right? Yeah. But as I was saying, the, Patrick looked like he was a little upset when he cast that Price of Progress, and I think that, that may have been a bit of posturing. You know, I see a Wasteland, maybe I shouldn't have cast this into Wasteland, but realistically, I think that he yeah. wanted him to actually cast, or use the Wasteland to blow up his own land. I think it's safe for Patrick to assume that his opponent did not board in an answer to Ensnaring Bridge. Like, literally just is cold to it as far as combat on the ground. Yeah. And that means that the top of Patrick's deck is so much more live than the top of Derek's deck. Uh, and that can only be compounded by a mana shortage on Derek's side of the board. Of course, I think that Patrick realizes that the last card and the last card that he can really afford to cast is the Flame Rift. If he, if he plays the Flame Rift now, for example, he would knock himself down to 10. There are three Lightning Bolts on, his, on Derek's side of the game, and that's like one of the few ways that he can lose this game. So I think the Flame Riff will actually be the last burn spell that Patrick yeah. does cast. So we're going to see a Grim Lava Mancer activation here. Yeah, be very careful which cards we remove. <laughs> yes. It's going to knock Derek down to nine. Derek is going to let him untap again. So refusing to pull the trigger on a Lightning Bolt for that Grim Lava Mancer. So we see another Chain Lightning going upstairs, as it were. I'm thinking we might have uh, missed seeing one of those cards. I think he might have another price in his hand. Lightning Bolt U. I'm not sure what our game is here. Attempting to put Patrick down to 11. Um, I mean, attempt is a poor word. It's going to happen. Yeah. Patrick is responding with? with a price. Yep, we uh, we missed saw a card. Okay. So this is a price I'm of progress. I think maybe we thought the Grim Lava Mancer was a flame worth in retrospect. Sure. But uh, yep, we're gonna respond with price of progress. Once again, put our opponent to the test. Yep. And our opponent does not want to. <laughs> he doesn't want to take the test. Not interested. <laughs> so Patrick Sullivan ties up this match. We're gonna be moving over to game three. Derek Shoots will be on the play this game. And he's going to the sideboard. He's going I... to the sideboard. He no. is. I think we might be seeing an Ancient Grudge or a Crimson Grip coming into the deck. I got a feeling maybe Patrick is going to be going to the sideboard too now. Uh, I see. All right, that's a Lightning Bolt that's clear there. And it looked like he pulled out a couple of cards. Patrick not going to re sideboard. Just going to basically say, Eric, if you, excuse me, Derek, if you draw the Crimson Grip or the Ancient Grudge from my Engineering Bridge, so be it. 
It's interesting. I kind of wonder what he sideboarded out for them, to be, to be honest. Uh, probably the Flame Rifts, as the Flame Rifts and the Vortexes. You can't keep in Vortex and uh, Bridge, right? That's just too much. No, I think, I think that's yeah. too much, yeah. So, let's see. Uh, looks like he decided to keep in a Stifle. He was considering siding one out. He's taking out a Ponder. All right. Another? I think that was another Ponder. I'm not, I'm not sure. I definitely see an Ancient Grudge. Yep, Ancient Grudge, Crows and Grip. Yep. I had a feeling those boys were going to come in. That's not much of a surprise. Nope, there they go. And I believe he cited out potentially two Ponders to make room. Uh, I'm not sure if I agree with citing out Ponder. While it's true that it's like a, one of your slower cantrips, uh, you really want to use it to find a lot of your important spells. One of the reasons this deck is good is it's so excellent at finding the important cards. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if that decision comes back to bite him without being able to manipulate his deck very well. This deck can have mana problems. It'll be interesting to see if this, yep. it, how this is going to work out Oh, he's going back in. He's taking out one of those Fire Ices. I think I like that. Yeah. Looks like he's taking he out, out both Fire Ices. Okay. okay, I prefer that vastly. Uh, what do you think about Force of Will in the matchup? I mean, Force of Will is going to do you one versus, like, you know, either you're taking three or you're going to take one. It sure. is, it does cost the card, an additional card, of course, but I mean, simple math, just Force Will take one, do I want to take one or do I want to take three? It's basically how I look at it, but also in these sideboarder games, it can also counter a, like, back-breaking and snaring bridge now that we've seen yep. that. So I think he's going to want to leave it in in some number. I'm not entirely sure if four is the correct number, but he's going to want to have some in his deck. Yep, I, I agree with that. I think that Force of Will, especially once you see Ensnaring Bridge, is a, a very viable choice to just keep in your deck. Interestingly, I think Derek mostly boarded out his Stifles uh, going through his sideboard. Uh, I saw him fanning it out, and it looked like he had uh, more than a couple copies in there. So Okay. It's not much of a surprise to me. I mean, they're good, but he, it seems like he does have some better options. But really, like a lot of your cards apply in a lot of directions. You just got to pick and choose your battles. as both players are shuffling here for game three. Derek, again, will be on the play this game, which does seem quite important. It's gonna be also relatively important for him to start with a Nimble Mongoose instead of a Delver of Secrets, in my opinion, just because Nimble Mongoose, obviously, something that Patrick cannot kill. Delver of Secrets is something that Patrick can interact with. Yep. That was one of the largest problems I had when I was playing uh, Blue Red Delver in Legacy. Nimble Mongoose. Very dangerous. Delver Secrets. Not, not so bad. Yeah. Alrighty, and away we go. See a Crozen Grip, a Delver, a Tropical Island, a Delver, and a Tarmogoyf, and a Wasteland, and a Stifle. Well, that's a pretty good hand. That is a pretty good hand. Don't have any red mana, but we don't really need it either, so that's nice. Yeah. We've got one of the Abong brothers. I, I believe that's Jason Abong. It's hard to tell, but with them being twins and all, uh, hmm. Jason uh, Jason Abong, if that is in fact him, uh, was playing <laughs> down for top eight uh, this round and may have locked with a win. Well, we do not see Delver Secrets, but we do see a Grim Lava Mancer. That's peculiar. That's interesting. He was trying to basically get him get him with the stifle. I had I think that's a little bold, Cotton. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Uh, let's lead Delver. And See, now this Delver is uh, very play. awkward, right? Like, well, now you're not going to really be... You're not going to see a stifle on a fetch We just played now. a Delver of Secrets against a living Grim Lava <laughs> like, Now there's a stifle for... There is a stifle for a Grim Lava Mancer activation, but again... Not only if we give him the opportunity. Yeah, again, you know, it happened to Patrick in the first game, so you know it's at the forefront of his mind. Well, he may be a little landline himself from the looks of things. Yes, we're going to see a lava spike here from Patrick. I assume that's going to preempt an attack. No. Oh, oh we're just, gonna, wow. Yeah. We just have it all. We have a fetch land. Hand me off. <laughs> and we are almost certainly going to see that Grim, uh, yeah. that Delver of Secrets go bye-bye. Patrick's mama didn't raise no fool. That's right. Get that out of here. Next creature, please. As Derek draws a Nimble Mongoose for the turn. Now Derek's mana base coming back to bite him a little bit here. Yep. Two Wastelands and just one source of colored mana. Unfortunately for him, all of his spells currently are just blue and green, so the Tropical Island is of use and will be working overtime as we see another Delver of Secrets. 
But the longer you let that Grim Lava Mancer, Grim Lava Mancer is fantastic against the Rug decks. You can control Tarmogoyf, you can control Delver of Secrets. It makes it so that, they, that, that the Rug Delver player has to draw Nimble Mongoose, which Derek has, but again, it's not a threshold right now, so it's not very imposing. Another spike of lava. Yep, another spike of lava. How much is too much of a good thing? Upstairs we go. Oh. We're going to play this song and dance again. It's getting graphic now. <laughs> Another mountain, not letting your Delver do anything. Absolutely not. We might actually see a chain lightning this turn from Patrick as well. Just to get around days. Okay, we're just gonna lava see a lava spike. spike. Well, if we had a lava spike, that's obviously the, the clear one to lead with. Yep. And now, pew, get those sorceries out of here. Tarmogoyf insurance, of course, yep. wanting to keep it as small as you can. We see a brainstorm here for Derek. He's going to go for it. Hit one, days, Zenith, Tarmogoyf. Ugh. So now... Yeah, this is this looks really grim now. Yes. We're very far behind. It's going to be diff difficult for us to even start attacking before Patrick's threatening lethal damage just with a grim lava man, so much less like, you know real dangerous cards. And now Derek, Derek, he has a Wasteland in his hand and he real, realistically can't play it because yeah. of Price of Progress. If he plays it, uh, the thing is, I, I think you do play it just because it's a free roll in play, like it can destroy itself. This is kind of making me think Derek doesn't know about the ability to use Wasteland to destroy itself. Sure. Because so if it's in play untapped, it really doesn't matter that it's we, there. As we see a Chain Lightning from Patrick and Grim Lavamancer getting busy attacking. Shh. Yeah, and now, and, and I've been shushed. <laughs> I've been shushed by Glenn. So that day's doing next to nothing, but we are likely going to see a Tarmogoyf this turn. Yep, but at this point, I'm, I'm not sure what we can really do. If he plays the Tarmogoyf, he'll have to pop his Wasteland on himself in order to protect it from the Grim Lava Mancer. Otherwise, the Grim Lava Mancer will simply remove the cards to kill a 1 2 Tarmogoyf. Squire is not legacy playable these days. Not now, not ever. As we, it looks like we are going to be seeing. Okay, we, we can see a Zenith for that Zenith seems, for two here. I, I don't know what we're getting. It's scavenging is. And it's just gonna Ooh, die. Yeah. You can see there's scavenging is or a Tarmogoyf. Either Dying one. A horrible fire. Either one. But I, he does want to shuffle his deck because one of the cards. Yes, he knows that that brainstorm was bad. So yeah, that's fair. I'll give him credit on that one. I did not uh, appropriately consider how terrible our top card was and how much we needed to shuffle. There's the old 4-5 Tarmogoyf box. That's, um, huh? 4-5 seems a little high. A little Since high. We have creature it's a sorcery land. It's a 3-4. Come on Unless now. there's something off the screen we can't see. Pretty sure that's a 3-4. Oh, the, is there a brainstorm? I think we might be missing that brainstorm. Okay. Yep, we, uh, that's our bad guys. Fell off the screen and then we forgot it existed. Well, we're not going to Grim Law from answer that. We're Grim Law from answering you. Yep. We're going upstairs. That's where this chain lightning is going to. That seems likely. Up top. One days. days. We'll pay. We uh, can this pay. will grow the Tarmogoyf. We can pay through that or we can pay through Shusha. I, th I think Patrick Shush. That's my, my yeah. read. <laughs> He's going to pay through Shusha. Now we see another chain lightning in Patrick's hand. He's just going to pass back. Not under any pressure, sitting pretty at 18 life, as we do see a Scalding Tarn finally coming, giving Derek another source of colored mana. Uh, do we have the life total right? Is Derek on 7? I thought that put him to 4, right? I believe that is going to knock him down to 4, yes. Yeah, which just makes his choice of Tropical Island over Fetchland very relevant. He's yes. going to 3, really big deal. That opens Patrick up to a lot more ways to kill him, but at this point, it looks like it's pretty much locked up for Patrick anyway. He needs any spell to kill his opponent over the next turn cycle. As we are going to see an attack or here. Or fetch line. Before blocks. Or anything. We're going to see a stifle of... 
Da, da, da. The problem is here, if we stifle that, we're just dead because the Vexing Chusher is going to attack. Yes. He's just in, a, in between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, he didn't really get going very well this game. Patrick really did a nice well. job of taking care of the Delver Secrets, which were the early aggression. And his creatures, which last game they would have died like crazy, aren't dying this game. Uh, I think we're just we're dead no, no matter what we do here. Let's just stifle. Why not? He knows we have it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Stifle yep. the activation. I think that's fine. It just locks the game up for, uh, for as near as Patrick can see. Spoon down to a 3-4. Patrick is going to take 3, move down to 15. And so long as I did see correctly, there is another chain lightning in Patrick's hand. He will draw a card. You get to do that every turn. Yeah. It's one of the better parts of magic. We will see a chain lightning. And we see Patrick Sullivan with his burn deck as only he can. <laughs> Moving on to 7-1 and one and potentially again a top 8 berth. He had to play yesterday for top 8 and lost in, as, as he said, and I'm quoting, 8 minutes. <laughs> he died very quickly playing for top 8 yesterday, but um, he may be able to draw today. So either way, it's not going to be a long match because he is playing burn. So he could die in 8 minutes again or win in 8 minutes. Who knows? And a 